So basically, you know, we've got the six receivers around this island, so we've got pretty good coverage. But just on the north end, on the outside end of that far crater that they call the banana because of its shape, is one area that's a kind of a, a dark spot. So this is what you'll be mounting, and essentially, <coughs> This is what we call the receiver or the monitor. All it does, it will receive information from the tags that we're putting on all the fish. Each tag on all the wahoo, the sharks, and everything else we're tagging has a unique coded signal. And so in a year's time, when we go and download the data from this, we'll just have a list of tag IDs with dates and times. And then we can build up a picture of where they're residing around the islands, what their movement patterns are, whether they're moving in between islands, that kind of thing. And we already have six around the island, so all we're doing is improving our coverage. And then we can start figuring out where the fish that we're tagging on this trip are going. Galapagos receivers are important not only for the Galapagos Marine Reserve monitoring, but also for the whole region uh, monitoring of the uh, shark and tagging programs. These receivers that are placed in strategic locations, both around Wolf and Darwin, and also throughout the entire eastern tropical Pacific, allow us to follow these sharks, to look at the movements between islands and around the islands. get into the water, we are trying to, to note, we are trying to understand how the marine ecosystems in Galapagos are working. I work in the Charles Darwin Foundation. The foundation was established in Galapagos around 50 years ago. When I'm diving, I'm just uh, basically counting sharks, trying to get their measure, trying to get their sex, so I can figure out how the populations uh, change over the year, so I can provide with the, to the National Park with the best management proposals in order to, to preserve and conserve the sharks. The Galapagos is one of the last shark refuges in the world. It's one of the last places in the world where you can still find big population of sharks. And that has been possible because it is a strong work with the local people, the Galapagos National Park, and the, all the scientists that work at the Charles Darwin Foundation to provide the technical information.